Hello and welcome to the Sovereign Collective Podcast, where we bring you real raw truth for your self-empowerment. I'm your host, Sasha Calavota, and I believe that you can stand on your own two feet, but that you don't have to do it alone. I love learning from people who continually strive to raise the bar, to go against mainstream thinking, and who dare to question the general consensus. People are risking ridiculed or even risk the loss of their professional status as they bravely question the common narratives and challenge the rest of us to expand our minds and to reconsider what we think we already know. Join me in learning how to take control of your health and your mind so that you can have the energy to think more clearly and the confidence to step up and take responsibility for all aspects of your life. We promise to never censor here because I believe you are strong enough to hear the real raw truth to make up your own mind. If you like what you find here at the Sovereign Collective Podcast, then please share with your friends and family. I so appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. And now, on to the show. Hey everyone, Sasha here. Another episode of Sovereign Collective Podcast. I believe it's episode, ooh, I don't know, 50, 50, hmm, 57. Perhaps it's 57. I have a couple more in the hopper as we speak right now, getting ready to come out. But today, we're getting into another one of my favorite topics. I love doing this stuff because I get to ask people my personal questions on topics that I love diving into. And today, we have Lisa Shekelmeyer here. And we're going to talk all about ozone, or you can refer to her as Shazandra Meyer, because once upon a time, I think David Wolf dubbed her with the name Shazandra Meyer, because she worked very closely with him many years ago, shortly after we met. Yeah. But I think I think I met you when I got back from Europe and I was pregnant. My son is now 14. So it's been almost 15 years, I think, that we have known each other. And in that time, I've known Lisa to be a nutrition expert. She was the coordinator, whatever, with David Wolf's raw nutrition certification through the Body and Mind Nutrition Center. She's a power lifter, was a power lifter. I recently learned in, you know, it, a little while ago that she's an artist and has an art degree, right? Is that right? Art degree of some kind. And her more recent um, foray into ozone is what where it brings us here today. She had an ozone clinic once upon a time here in Calgary. She's since moved away, doesn't have that clinic anymore. But she provides, Lisa, for those of you watching, you can hold up your little products. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, she's got some couple ozone products. That's the V-Bomb, the pink one. Yeah, that's ozonated olive, two forms of ozonated olive oil. Stuff that I have available at all times and I have said before that I have I know on this podcast oh and there's the newest lip balm um I was gonna bring mine but I forgot mine so she brought hers thank you um so it's the products that I always have and I've mentioned before that I have reversed a cavity I know more than once I said this on this podcast in my son's mouth with that green labeled product there the regular basic ozonated olive oil mm -hmm. you do not want to be without that stuff and we're going to learn about how Lisa got into it and why and why you guys want to have this available at all times because as we know now as, as I've alluded to another podcast you know you want to be able to deal with things at the source and avoid going to certain institutions as much as possible these days now more than ever right so if you've got an infection you've got a cavity you've got you know some skin <laughs> issue going on ozone is your friend so Lisa, thank you so much for being with me today. I'm super excited to get into this fascinating topic. And we're going to talk about, first of all, why ozone? What, what got you into it? And, and let's go from there. Okay. Well, thank you for having me on. And 15 years we've known each other. When you said that, I was like. I know. I know. Time like that. Yep. Um, so I started after I had left uh, working with David Wolf and just really wanted to teach classes within Calgary and do one on one nutrition with people and really kind of dove into more of like people who had uh, were looking for alternative cancer treatments and, you know, just try to up their immune systems um, through natural process. And um, so I had a client that had pancreatic cancer in fourth stage pancreatic cancer. And um, interestingly enough, she was going to go see Dr. Uh, oh my gosh, his name just escaped me. He was one of the doctors that was doing high enzymatic treatment oh, in, in who? In the States. I can't remember. Yeah, in the States. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. His name, Gonzalez, Dr. Gonzalez. Oh, okay. And he was doing high enzyme treatment and um, like the proteolytic enzymes and, you know, with a host of other things, diet and all of that and coffee enemas. And um, I had started to talk to David Wolf about that because he actually was one of the doctors, the naturopathic doctors that ended up suiciding himself. Right. And so we were stuck in the middle. Like we literally had sent all the paperwork to him and I was going to navigate that with my client. I was going to go with her and you know, cause I'd been in that cancer, like alternative cancer treatment for a long time, just through Gerson and, you know, just navigating uh, a, a more of a holistic treatment for people. And so he was no longer there. That clinic was not doing the same thing. And so I had spoke to David and he had just kind of given me a list of different things and, you know, a source for the high enzymatic, um, uh, pro or the enzymes, the proteolytic enzymes and just different things like that. And he said, you know, one of the things you should do is ozone. And I was like, okay. And interestingly enough, I was thinking about this because my first bout with ozone was probably, I bet you 10 years earlier. And I had, you know, you can do prolotherapy Mm -hmm. where they inject dextrose into, you know, uh, a place of inflammation or chronic pain. And then the blood flow goes to that area and speeds up the healing. But there was also prolozone. And what they do is they actually, yeah. And, and there's, there's a number of really great doctors in Calgary that do it. And uh, so what they do is they inject the dextrose, but they chase it right away with pure ozone. They put it in a syringe and chase it. And because you're getting that activated oxygen, it speeds everything up because prolozone is actually, or prolotherapy is quite painful and it can take a long time, but when they chase it with ozone, it's very quick. So anyways, I was like, so I didn't really know that much about ozone and he connected me with uh, somebody he knew in the US and I'm like, okay, I was going to send my, my client there. And, but then I realized it was going to take weeks and weeks and like, you know, weekly treatments and for a long time. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. Um, and I'm like, nobody's doing it in Canada. Like, how is that a thing? And, and we'll get to that because there are people doing ozone, but not in the sauna. There was nobody doing it in the sauna. And I'm like, okay, hook me up. I don't, I, I want to start doing this. And that's actually what started me. Interestingly enough, this client actually reversed that pancreatic cancer tumor. And it was a series of bad, uh, you know, I mean, bad surgeries that actually ended up like really kind of taking her life, but the cancer tumor was gone in that. No way. Yeah, and that's she, really, that's power that's is very significant because you don't hear that outcome with pancreatic cancer a lot right no. not that you can't do it but people just generally don't go down these roads but it's that's unfortunate so that's yeah it that. that's unfortunate. yeah it, it was sad but um yeah so that that's kind of a that was a sad story but anyways and then i I had, she was my first client basically. And I just started the clinic, found a place to set up and off I went. And I was just seeing patient after, or, well, client after client after client after client. And uh, yeah, did that for what, six years, I guess, until COVID. And then, you know, I had to shut down. I was going to keep running, but I was subletting under a doctor who did acupuncture and TCM and it was her association that said you cannot run. And because the lease was under her name, I had to shut down, but I'm like, I'm in the most, you know, disinfected room in all of Calgary. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Keep running. Yeah. Um, but such a powerful therapy, like it just so good. I just saw so much healing. People loved it. I had clients that would see me three times a week, probably, Sometimes some of them were three, four years. So wow. they were, oh yeah. They just, it was like part of their, it was just part of their, their. I've gone a few times and I know oh. I really enjoyed it. I mean, when I was detoxing or just general maintenance, you know, to make sure, you know, you just cleaning house, right? Combine it with some coffee. I must combine it with some fasting and you can take care of most exactly. things. Right? Exactly. So, exactly. So what kind of people, what would people come to see you for so 
everything from uh, high-end athletes. I was working with uh, athletes that were training for the Olympics mm. um, that would come to just to reduce the lactic acid. Like when they had a really hard training day, they would show up. They just felt amazing. Power lifters, uh, people who just wanted to get that extra oxygen in their body. So maybe nothing was really going on. They didn't feel like anything was going on. That's kind of like going for a massage. You're like, I feel so much better after. Uh, to cervical cancer, um, to people who were working with other cancers, um, testicular, uh, mold toxicity, Lime, um, yeah. oh my gosh, like it was just, uh, the list just went on. Yeah. And kids to, you know, adults. I ask, all ages. All ages, yeah, all ages. Okay, so what is, okay, so let's talk about what was that, because you're not doing that, unfortunately, anymore. So anybody looking for that, there's, Health Canada is keeping us safe, you know, so there's rules around these things in this part of the world, unfortunately. So there's not, it's not that accessible anymore, but explain the ozone sauna and then let's get into why, what, what's so special about ozone. So what, what, what would somebody, if they can access it somewhere else, what would they expect? Um, well, the most common way and probably one of the, the best ways to get, so, to get ozone in, I well, I shouldn't say the best way, but it's the most common way. The easiest way is to do it in a sauna. So you're basically sitting in a capsule. Your head is exposed because you don't want to breathe in ozone. Ozone is an irritant for the, the lungs. So we don't want to breathe it in. There is a way to breathe it. We can talk about that. Um, and then you're basically just sitting in a sauna, your skin pores are opening or heating up and you're getting sweaty and they're opening up and then pure ozone is coming into the sauna and it's going into your, through your skin, into your blood, into your lymph system, into your fat, you know, basically it's just, it's cleaning house is what it's doing. Right. Um, that's the most common way that people would use it when they were seeing me in the clinic or breathing. So when you breathe ozone, because you can't breathe it directly, it must be bubbled through olive oil. And when the ozone is bubbled through olive oil, those really harsh molecules will bind to the oil. And what is blooping out, you're basically put a respirator on and you're breathing that air that's kind of blooping above the olive oil is super healing for any lung issues. So, um, working with COPD clients or just bad cold. I literally had a client that had laryngitis, came to me once, messaged me the next day and said, what was that? Because I might, I have not been able to talk for like three weeks and I went for one treatment and it was just gone. I had nursing moms like or, or nursing babies and moms would hold them and I would just kind of hold the mask like just in that area so that they were you know that the babies had uh, uh, like colds or you know they were congested and they would just be breathing that air and I, one of the moms had messaged me and said this is like the most effective treatment that I've done on my baby like completely cleared up right. um, so super super clearing for anything that you have going on with congestion or nasal or head colds or anything like that. They'll also do it for lung cancer when people have lung cancer. So you're getting all those healing ozonides and it's not damaging or anything to the lung tissues or anything like that. So that's how you would breathe in ozone. Right. And then uh, do you want to talk about other ways that we would get ozone in? Yeah. 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 So um you can do auto chemotherapy. Now this is, you can still get this in Calgary. And so there are naturopathic clinics that will do auto chemotherapy, meaning they will draw your blood, they will ozonate it, and they do what's called a 10 pass. And they actually run that blood through you 10 times. It, it's very expensive equipment. It, you know, it requires taking blood, needles, all of that kind of stuff. And then of course, you know, dealing with that waste as well, the needles and all of that. Mm. Um, I had a, a client that had breast cancer, did her treatments in Mexico. And they said, if you can get ozone in Calgary, do that. So she would do the 10 pass, 
but she actually stopped doing that and would only come to me in ozone in the sauna. She said, cause she actually felt better just in the sauna. And it was so inexpensive, like a one-off right. in my clinic was like $65, right. you know, so not very much money at all. No. And um, so whereas auto chemotherapy, I think is like, it's probably 300 bucks, if not more. A ton, um, every session. Every session that you do. Yeah. yeah. And every session you do, they pull blood and there's also um, IV injections. So they'll go right into the vein with ozone. Now people get all freaked out because they go, what about an embolism? You're getting oxygen. You're not actually getting oxygen. Oxygen is 80%. Uh, you know, it's, it's only 21% oxygen and um, uh, what's nitrogen. the other? Nitrogen. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, so, you know, when you're putting that into a vein or you're doing a needle, of course you have to be careful, but ozone, uh, you don't have to worry about that at all. And the body just like takes it up because it's pure oxygen. Um, so you can do IVs. People love that. That's used a lot in many alternative cancer treatments and they just go right into the vein um now i heard that alberta was doing that like every province has their own ozone um like or their the 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 provincial health boards have their own regulations now i know saskatchewan no but i heard that alberta can actually do direct iv oh, okay. which is amazing and so it just goes right into the vein um you can do ear insufflation. So if somebody was coming in for ears, I would just start at like maybe one minute, two minutes, three minutes, work up to maybe five minutes. And you're just letting the ozone drop into the ear. You're not, you're not sealing the ear off. You have a fan on so that, you know, it's blowing any ozone that's escaping out of the ear. So you're not breathing it in super effective for um, things like, you know, brain cancer, People who would do Lyme, come in for Lyme treatment in the sauna, we would always do the ears after because they, you know, those spirochetes can like travel where there's no ozone because they don't want to be in the body really. And so they're going to go where there's less ozone. So they would go into the head and people can feel very foggy brained after that. So always chasing an ozone sauna for a Lyme uh, client with ozone in the ears, ear infections. Um, they say it can work with tinnitus. I've tried that on a few clients. It was not successful with that, but you know, there's, they say that tinnitus can be, um, you know, based on emotion or it can based on, you know, some kind of like, uh, mineral imbalance. Like, so I, you know, I don't know, but I was not successful with that. You can also do, which is probably the best way I feel like for women to do is vaginal. So when you're sitting in the sauna, is that what you did? Did you do that? No, I did it rectally. I never did oh, it rectally, right. but I did it at the end. I'm like, I just want to get it right up there everywhere. So like the yeah. back, that last five minutes sticking it up there, guys, totally. you know, this is what we do in the name of health, right? Get to see what's possible. So yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. vaginal is great because it's, you know, um, you know, it's like one of the benefits of being a woman is that we get to put that tube up there. And basically what it is, is the ozone tube is coming into the sauna and then I would just attach the catheter, medical grade catheter, you insert it like you would a tampon. And then that ozone is flooding into your uterus, your fallopian tubes, any organs into your blood system, like lymph. It's amazing. Okay. It's a, that is an amazing treatment. So I personally like doing vaginal, um, just on the regular, whereas, um, you know, women who would come in that maybe had, were dealing with uh, vaginal herpes or uh, candida um, UTIs like amazing oh. works so yeah. good like often just one treatment boom it's done right yeah That's a big thing. Um, I mean so many women dealing with that these days there's something off there's certain things that are coming up these days and UTIs is a big one UTIs are a big one yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of women come in with with UTI stuff yeah uh -huh. and then uh, rectal like you did so you know, I, it's interesting because I was just listening to a podcast not that long ago. And it, it was interesting because it was called The War on Oxygen. And I thought, oh, that's so interesting. Like, uh, you know, we just have a war on everything. And now I'm just going to segue here, but medical grade oxygen, medical grade oxygen, the tanks, you cannot get them without a prescription. 
You cannot get oxygen concentrators, which take ambient air and concentrate it down to, you know, a level that can be used in a, like ozone or, you know, in a generator or something like that. And now they've taken away ozone from us. And uh, yeah, so literally a war on oxygen. I thought that's like an interesting title. Like, Isn't that interesting, right? Yeah. Like so kind of our basic nutrient out of anything right that we need that's the number one nutrient it's our first nutrient and it's so crazy that we're just being like i actually read something the other day that also said that ozone is a medical uh is a medical component or something you know and i'm thinking what like so as soon as they brand things with medical you know all of a sudden it's like or medicine now it can be held back from us unless you have a prescription or, you know, whatever that is. But anyways, back to the rectal insufflation yeah. is that um, when we do like the auto chemotherapy, take the blood or, you know, and, and rotate that into the system, into our blood, like with, with a 10 pass or something, or you do rectal like you did and you basically uh, you know, have a medical grade catheter, insert that into the rectum. You only need five minutes and your body will just dump that ozone into the blood system so quick. And they, you know, really the, the research that I have read about doing, um, auto chemotherapy and rectal is comparing apples to apples. Oh. And so, yeah. So I, you know, like, I just feel like that is, it's not apples and oranges. It's like, no, you can get all this benefit from doing rectal insufflation without having to deal with needles without having to deal with all of that stuff. Now for people who, you know, maybe, maybe you have a machine at home or maybe you're thinking of getting one and you're like, well, I don't actually want to attach a catheter to the end of that hose and insert it rectally. You can get ozone bags. They're actually rectal insufflation bags and you fill the bag up with 500 milliliters of ozone and, you know, with, and depending on the concentration that you're using and they have a lure lock on the, on, on, on the bag. And so you can just lock it after you fill it. And then you would immediately go just lay down and then there's a catheter on it and you just undo the, insert the catheter, undo the lure lock, and then just slowly roll the bag up into the rectum which is going to just flood the body with all that ozone and you don't have to worry or feel like uh, nervous about having to attach right from the generator, you know, rectally. Cause you don't want to do rectal a long time. It's the closed chamber different than vaginal vaginal. You can do for 30 minutes because it's an oh. open chamber, right? But rec- okay. you know, rectally it's closed chamber and you don't want to fill up. Right. And so usually it's just like five <laughs> minutes and um, yeah, I've had people do rectal, kid you not, go right to the bathroom and pass parasites because parasites cannot live in an oxygenated environment. And so that's the benefit of ozone. Right. Um, yeah. Benefits. So, okay. So people, people hear this word ozone, ozone, ozone. They probably, don't, a lot of people might not even know what ozone is. So we hear about it in the ozone layer. There's a big hole in the ozone layer, which doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. I don't know about that, but um. So O3, it's different than O2, oxygen. We've got O3. So why is it such a special molecule? And why do we want to do, why are we not oxygenating? Why are we ozonating? Well, we kind of want to do both. We want to oxygenate our body through the foods that we eat and clean water and clean, you know, air and, you know, getting out into nature because that will actually oxygenate our body. Sure. Um, But the difference is ozone. So how I make ozone is I have, I use pure um, air, oxygen. And if people are looking for ozone generators and they see them and they're, that ozone generator is using ambient air, you do not want that. That is not going to be medical grade ozone. So I take pure oxygen. It goes into a plasma generator, which is Tesla in, invention. And um, so the, there's plasma gas. It's like a, it's like a, a charged gas that's inside a tube, and the ozone goes through, or the oxygen goes through that, and it gets electrically charged, and it splits the oxygen molecules. So you have three now, three oxygen molecules, and 
Oxygen wants to actually bind to something. So two will recombine to oxygen, but you have this extra one and it's electrically charged, negatively charged. And in the body and in nature, it's kind of how it works in the ozone layer. We could like talk about that a little bit. I know a little bit about that because people would always say, well, the ozone, ozone layer, like you just said, the ozone layer, it's so bad and what's happening. But that, that's just a natural process of the earth. Um, so we now have this, what's called, so people will call it activated oxygen because it's electrically charged. They'll call it ozone. It, it is three oxygen molecules, but the two are already quickly binding to, to form O2 oxygen. And yeah. then, or they'll say it's like, uh, did I say activated, activated yeah. oxygen? Yeah. So what that does in the body is it starts to look for anaerobic cells. Now our, our cells have a antioxidant coating on them, like a perfect little coating that protects them. Like, I mean, our, our body's super efficient at using oxygen. And when the cells need oxygen, it literally just opens up, pulls what it needs, you know, to start this metabolic process. And it has this perfect little coating, but when cells get damaged or lack oxygen, they don't have this like antioxidant around them. They don't have that. And so this is the beautiful thing about ozone. So you have this O1 that's running around the body looking for positively charged gunk in the body. And it's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for me because I don't know where your, uh, you know, disease cells or damaged cells are, but ozone does. And so it runs around the body and it will attach. It can, because it wants to attach to something, it will attach to those, um, to those imperfect cells and it will pull the toxins out. And now that cell can actually get the oxygen it needs. That's how it works. And it will just dump that right out of the body. So it's a beautiful system. Um, and it, that's how it works in nature as well. So plants, you know, like they're breathing out oxygen, right. And the oxygen is, is light and it goes way up into the atmosphere. Like from my understanding is like kilometers in the atmosphere and then the sun basically hits it and electrifies it like mm. and now you have all these and there isn't just like oh three there's like oh four oh five oh six oh twenty one like there's a whole so these oxygen molecules just start binding together and as it floats back down to the earth then it's like starts to recombine into oxygen and the, yeah, that's my understanding of the ozone layer. And when we, when, like in a thunderstorm too, right? That that's a, being electrified too, and we can smell that, right? We can yeah. smell the ozone in the air. That fresh, that fresh. Exactly. It, yeah. Exactly. So you know this idea of um, you know antioxidants. Like, what is an antioxidant? It's a very misleading word, and anti means against and oxidant is this oxygen therapy but really that's not how it works because they really should change the word <laughs> so you know <laughs> if you eat dark green vegetables or you eat sprouts or algae you know very high antioxidant high in minerals and vitamins and um you know they don't stop o2 from happening they actually basically you know, help regulate oxidation reactions in our body. That's right. really what it does. And so, you know, it really comes down to, and I know, you know, you also preach this and you teach this and it's about, we are so stagnant in our bodies. Yeah. We're so stagnant. And the more stagnant you are, the less oxygen you're getting. I mean, the body's really just wants to survive right? That's really what it wants to do. And if it's not going to get enough oxygen, then what does it do? Like, you know, we use oxygen for uptake in the, in the cells that turns into really healthy um, energy or ATP production. But if we don't have that, this is my understanding. And I know, you know, if I'm, if I'm not correct on this, you, you'll correct me. But my understanding is that if we don't get enough oxygen and we're really sluggish, the body actually will start to use, um, will convert or ferment body yeah. sugars. Yeah. And, and now we have acid process. Yeah, right. It's very inefficient and it's not nearly the amount of energy that we would normally get. 
Exactly. So we're, we have fatigue, we have, you know, low healing, we have inflammation, we have, um, uh, you know, acidosis, like we have all these, these things that, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And then people go, oh, well, I need to take some antioxidants, right? Cause they're going to sell you on the antioxidants, just take antioxidants and you'll be okay, which is okay because any amount of oxygen that you can get into your body when you're so sluggish is going to be good. And people would feel better on that, but it's, it's, it's not a magic bullet. Like you actually need to do all the things you need to pump the lymph system. You need to get good air. You need to get good water. You it's all the things that we talk about getting no. out of nature, you know, no. putting your feet on the earth. So it's not this one thing, but, but if you don't have enough oxygen, you just become so stagnant. And that's the beauty of ozone is that you can flood your body with oxygen and get at um, these anaerobic cells, this bacteria, the pathogens, the cancer cells, all these imperfect things that are happening in the body and just render them neutral and then like really start to get all this good oxygen in the body. But it's a process, you know, it's not a magic bullet, right? you know, but it's, it's an amazing, amazing tool that has been used for, well, you, you know, I don't know, a hundred, oh, 150 years, 180 years, maybe. 180 yeah. years, right. So that's the thing. It's not new. This is not new technology. And I just want to say, but when we talk about the antioxidants, the oxidants, we always label one thing as good and one thing's bad. We think of oxidation as bad. It's always referred to in a bad state. You know, that the, the apple's going brown or something's rusting. It's all oxidation, oxidation. But there's, it's a balance. There's, there's yin and yang. There's there's antioxidant and then there's oxidation. There's like, it's, it's always both. There's bad cholesterol, good cholesterol. No, there's lipoproteins that are taking cholesterol to the body and away from the cell. So, and we need them both. There is all essential, right? We have oxidation going on in our body through our metabolism all day long. It's really important to balance this thing. And, and, and I hate that labeling of this is the good thing and this is the bad thing. No, it just needs to be happening in the right ratios. And sometimes you need more of one than the other, right? Like that's that's what drives me crazy, this labeling of good and yeah. bad and healthy. Because I really think antioxidants, that's, it's a real big buzzword. When people are saying, oh, it's full of antioxidants. It's like, well, great, but it's such a buzzword. to kind of cringe when I hear that all the time because we know oxidative therapies, ozone, oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, CDS, all these things we know are super powerful and with those you can you can mitigate a lot of things that are going on in the body totally so. it's it's like the the you know the misleading um idea of free radicals you know free radicals is a natural process it's it's i mean it's an unstable molecule in made in normal cell metabolism but it's like when things get out of whack, now we have like too many free radicals. It's kind of like your the gut symbiosis. Like, you know, right. we have we have good bacteria, but we also have a percentage of bad. And and it stays when it stays in that balance, everything's great. Right. But when we start to like feed our body full of like, you know, too much bad sugar and you know, all, you know, terrible food and so much alcohol and all these things that are gonna just throw that that uh, balance out, now we have health issues. And it's the same with free radicals. It's That's a natural process. And it's when it becomes just, you know, the body can't keep up with the natural process of, of rendering them neutral through our oxygen, natural oxygen that we're taking in. And so we go, oh my gosh, you know, it's like our, my free radicals are taking over. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess that they are, but you know, you can actually change that. It's not a bad thing. The body doesn't create a bad thing it's that we have just fed it to create right you know, this this uh you know unbalanced system yeah right i think so. nutrient deficiencies and poisons are two of the major reasons like a lot of people are just they're just deficient we're so deficient these days put in a little bit of emotional trauma some microbial disturbances a little bit of poison and nutrient deficiencies and there's your soup of what's really making us unwell right <laughs> totally that's exactly it that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. So, okay. History. So this isn't new. So where did this first come up in the history books and why are you a fan of the Tesla technology over anything else? So, um, the history actually, it's interesting. It was going on in the early 1800s. 
I, I think even there might even be stuff like from the from the late 1700s, but let's say for sure the early 1800s. And um, but it wasn't actually named. So so there was, you know, I've read some of those history books. Actually, I went over it just, you know, for for our, our, our uh, podcast today, just to go, oh, OK, I'm going to just refresh on that. It wasn't actually named until 1840 in Germany, like the actual ozone molecule, even though there had been stuff that was happening before. So it was a little bit of people all over were kind of going, hey, what's happening here? What's happening here? Until uh, what's his name? Like uh, Sean Burr, Sean Bein in Germany in 1840 said, this is ozone. And then Tesla didn't come onto the scene until like 1896. Well, he, no, 18... Yeah, 1896, he patented the first ozone generators. And then in the 1900s, he made the first ozone generator company. And that is actually what exploded ozone, particularly in Germany and in Europe. There was, ozone was happening like in the early 1900s all over the place. And, you know, up until, like there was, Germany was full of ozone clinics up until World War II. Um, I've read reports like during World War II, a lot of those uh, ozone clinics were bombed and uh, the medical, you know, the big pharma had come in starting to drive into Europe and heal people with their big pharma mm -hmm. inventions. Heal people. Uh -huh. heal people. Exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so it was interesting because I was actually, there was another uh report that I was reading and it was a Dr. Meyer and he was working as a doctor on Ellis Island and Ellis Island was where the prisoners of war from Germany were coming. And there was a prisoner that was sick and he said, just give me ozone therapy. And Dr. Meyer was like, what is that? And he was a pediatrician by trade, but mm -hmm. and so he basically told him about how ozone works, how to do it. He started up a clinic working in the U S and I believe he was in Florida and he worked on thousands, thousands of children wow. successfully. If they had meningitis, that he would inject ozone into their spinal fluid. Like wow. amazing until he got shut down, but he was doing it for over 50 years. And there's story after story after story like that. Just so many successful ozone treatments. I think, you know, it's like, I think I read something like 8 million ozone treatments in Germany alone. It's used widely every day in Germany, in Italy, in France, in Poland, you know, so many European countries. It's used in Africa, in some African countries. It's used in some of the states, not all the states, I think, um, have ozone. And of course, now Canada, it's no longer. It's no longer in all its forms, but you're, cause you're saying that some are. Well, different. yeah. So, um, what happened was December, the mid December of 2022. So just last December health Canada deemed ozone sauna in a clinic setting illegal. Now what's interesting about this, Sasha is over the COVID stuff. Lots of people started talking about ozone. Like, you know, Dave, it was on Dave Asprey and he, you know, he's a, he's a proponent of it. And many people were talking about it mainstream. I felt like it was like, Hey, do this to get rid of your cough. Just like people were talking about ivermectin or right. And look what happened with ivermectin. And I just, I had this intuitive hit and I'm like, they're going to shut that down. They're right. going to shut that down. Like for sure. Just like CVS, we know the story there. Um, and so December 12th, Health Canada deemed ozone sauna illegal in a clinic setting. They said you could not detect the amount of parts per million within a clinic to deem it safe. Now, uh, you know, I just like, th there was a Dr. Blass, I think, you know, they talk about him. It's in the, in the book, um, uh, Flood Your Body with Oxygen. And I remember reading this a long time ago, and he worked in... 52,000 times the recommended parts per million of ozone wow. in an enclosed room for over 25 years with no health effects. So what is that parts per million actually mean? Right. What does that mean? And so I, 
you know, I just really kind of wanted to fight that a little bit. And so I had um, phoned up Health Canada because, of course, they messaged me and said, we have a complaint about your clinic, which was a complete lie because I hadn't oh. been running. I was closed. And I kept asking her for the date. Well, she wouldn't give it to me on email. So I phoned her and I said, I'm just looking for the date when the complaint happened. And she said, why are you keep asking for the date? And I said, well, I just want to know. And she goes, well, I don't know. It just goes to a central data bank. And then we like get all, divvy out all the complaints. She goes, wow. but why are you so interested in it? And I basically said to her, because you're lying to me. <laughs> I've been closed for three years. And I said, and I can prove that to you. And she goes, but you have a website. And I said, that doesn't matter. Right. I can do whatever I want on my website. Artifact. And she said, but you're saying on your website that water uh, or ozonated water kills bacteria. And I said, but it does. Like it actually is used in industry all like all over the world and still in Canada, they use it to clean, you know, like when they do water reclamation at oil and gas places, they ozonate the water. It's used in swimming pool cleanup and pond cleanup. I mean, What's well, a water it, purification it, technique? It's, well, a water right? pur it's a water purification. And she, yeah, it was interesting. But I thought, you know, it's interesting if I, I asked her for the research to, to say that this was now illegal in Canada. I said, I want to know where that research is. I said, because you're going up against almost 200 years of research. And I said, if you go on to PubMed, there's like over 4,000 medical, you know, articles praising ozone and how it's been used in you know, it's used in medicine for many different things. And so she gave me a name, but of course that person never contacted me. I messaged them a couple of times, but I thought, yeah, you know, if I push that in the sense of, okay, I'm going to try and get this ozone clinic still running, they would probably make me spend tens of thousands of dollars every day with a monitor trying to calculate how many parts per million of ozone is in the air. And then I would have to like prove that that is healthy or not health or whatever it is yeah. and i'm like okay like, they just make you jump through hoops and go broke doing it this is what they do right yeah yeah so and, what and of course it's, it's on the onus is on you to prove it after this 200 years of like okay in the history is there any is there any evidence of it ever causing harm has there ever been a death has there been like unless it's maybe totally irresponsible somebody's sucking it in at this source but like has there been any documentation of harm if you read the literature and you you go through all of that it is something like the you know the harm if we want to use that word is something like 0. 0.000007 percent like it's so minute like really they deem ozone as one of the safest um you know protocols that you can do like healing and you know I also feel like this is I mean right now I think I want to say that you could get an ozone generator and get it into your home but you know longevity uh, ozone company that was in business for 26 years in Canada when Health Canada put that passed that on December whatever 12th last year they were out of business within a couple of months and no I had to yeah and they I phoned them and I just said, yeah, you know, heard the bad news. And she goes, you know, what's crazy is we are actually not even to, even though they deemed it illegal in a clinic, they would not allow it to be sold for personal use. So, right. Even though they're saying it's in a clinic, you couldn't get it for personal use and they wouldn't even allow them to sell saunas. Uh, so they were hooked. Saunas that you have to actually hook up the ozone. Like the, the ozone isn't part of the sauna, right? No. No, you could have a sauna. Right. So they wouldn't even allow them to sell. She goes, I can't even sell you a sauna. Right. I said, how's that a thing? Like, I can't have a sauna now? And she goes, not allowed to. So they actually were shut down after 26 years in business. And they tried really hard to, you know, to, to stay afloat. And they just couldn't manage for 26 years. And it's um, this system where doctors and their protocols and their mistakes together whether they are correctly prescribing or not are the third leading cause of death yeah and here we have this safety record and you know it's just like people what more evidence do you need to know that it, they're not working for us right? yeah. <laughs> totally and you know if you if you you know 
want to do the Google thing and, you know, is ozone harmful? I, I mean, you just, you, you get all crazy kinds of crazy stuff, but it's really, if it's used correctly, meaning, you know, you're using it in, you have a, a, a good uh, medical grade ozone system, you're not using ambient air, you're following the guidelines for concentrations and time. Um, you know what a Herx reaction is because people will Herx for sure. Right. So and for people who don't know that Herxing, that's your detox reaction, right? You're going to get flu-like symptoms. You're going to get skin eruptions. You're going to feel nauseous, whatever, whatever it is, right? Yeah. One of the things that is interesting that will happen in ozone is that if you're doing a lot of ozone sauna and your detox pathways are plugged or like clogged, let's say your liver, you're going to get like super itchy skin and you know, liver and skin are connected. Oh. And so when that happens, I would just say to my clients, start doing coffee enemas, take a couple weeks off, like help your body process all what they can process right now. Like give it a boost there. We'll stop doing ozone and they would do that, come back and they could just continue. You know, other people would be like, well, I just understand a Herx reaction. I'm just going to keep doing it, you know, but doing coffee enemas or, you know, something to just like get those toxins moving through the liver is always a really good thing if you have a reaction, but that would happen very rarely. Like I could say probably in the years that I ran the clinic, I bet you it maybe happened to three or four people. And, and as soon as I just said, do coffee enemas, got them on that you know, help clear that, um, they would just be, come back and everything would be fine. And for the most, so for people that still have access to this, for people in different countries or whatever, for the most efficacious way to go through an ozone therapy, like they've gone to a sauna, or they've had it rectally, vaginally, whatever. How do they combine that with potential antioxidant therapy that they're doing? Do they need to take a break? Do they need to, what, how do they combine those two? Well, no, because like, uh, like you don't want to go home and take a high dose of vitamin C right away, I would think, right? Well, you actually, they actually can work synergistically together. Like you could do a vitamin C IV today and then go for ozone sauna tomorrow. Tomorrow, but the next yeah. day. Yeah, the next day, exactly. Okay. So it's like, you know, it, it's really, you can use them together because what you're doing is when you get like this high antioxidant vitamin C intravenously, you're just adding more oxygen, like free radical scavengers, right? You're just actually helping that body um, move those free radicals, those damage free radicals out of the body, just like you are with doing ozone. So you, you can work them synergistically. That's what I was saying. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a bad name for antioxidants because people think it's a, it's against oxygen therapy. Right. But in fact, it's not. It's like you're actually helping the body. So you you want to take antioxidants if your body is really sluggish, right? I mean, if you're dealing with cancer or, you know, really autoimmune dysfunction or something like that, doing those, you know, doing IVs and stuff are super helpful yeah. because you're actually helping your body process more oxygen and moving, you know, the toxins out of the system. And then you combine it with ozone that can, you know, but if you are super stagnant and you think you're just going to take antioxidants from a pill, you know, I mean, it's kind of like saying, well, I'm super unhealthy. I'm just going to take vitamin C. Oh. And it's like, you're not really doing the work or I'm okay. going to take a, you know, like you, you, I'm going to, yeah. So if I take this, then it's okay if I keep eating this. It's like, you're trying to fill up a balloon and pop it at the same time. It doesn't work that way. It drives me crazy. So but yeah. also that stagnation is like this. I tell people, it's like, you got to get things moving. You got to get the lymph flowing up the stream because that's where the pond scum, the scum grows on the pond. It doesn't grow on the river. You got to get that stagnation out of the way. So exactly. Yeah. And people don't realize, you know, that lymph system is, uh, the lymphatic system is a pumpless organ. Like it's just not, you know, if you're sitting on a couch, it's not moving. Like you actually have to move. One of the, one of the best ways, like really is to just like get a rebounder. Like, I, I think that's like such a, an amazing way to just move the lymph system. So even if somebody is not well, you can get a rebounder with a little handle and you don't even have to, you don't even have to raise your feet off that thing. You can literally just do those little jumps those little pumps on that thing and it's going to pump that lymphatic system i always wanted to get the rebounder in my clinic 
And I just never had enough time or you know, I guess that's another process, but to get people in who were really not that well to get them in and to just have them pump their limb system for five minutes, then go into ozone. Oh, fun. Yeah. And then when they come out, pump their system again. So you're just really getting that ozone, like working through the whole system. Right. But yeah, it's just another thing. And I never did it, <laughs> but that would be a good way for people right. to do it. You know, if you're getting your own ozone in your house, I mean, getting ozone in your house is really about health sovereignty. And that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. Right. right. It's like yeah. taking care of your health. How are you going to do it? And right. it's such an inexpensive way to just have this treatment that everybody can use for everything, getting oxygen into the body as much as you can. Right. Um, you know, I wanted to say uh, too, that when people would come in for sauna, because you're getting that ozone into the lymph system and into, you know, your fat is what happens is the uh, toxins become water soluble and will just flood out of the body. They sweat out of the body. And so I would have people, white towels, lots of black. And the more your body, it, it was kind of an interesting thing because if you were really unhealthy um, and you're coming in for ozone, you often didn't, you'd think it would be the other way around that you would see so much black from an unhealthy person, right? Like they would just be dumping the toxins, but it's actually a hard process in the body. And so my dog's barking. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so you think it would be like a really easy or uh, an easy process for them, or you'd see a lot of toxins, but it's actually a hard process. And it would take them several rounds of ozone to finally their body is oxygenating and it can now move those toxins out of the system. Mm. Whereas somebody who's like, I mean, this is, you know, I'm, I'm saying this, but it's not 100% this way, but in many, many cases. So I would have like high-end athletes, people who really took care of their body, you know, drank a lot of water, got a lot of sunshine out in nature, ate great food, and they would come in and they would just dump toxins like crazy. So interesting. It is so interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's just another way of, of saying that, you know, when you're stagnant, you can be stagnant. You have to actually work your body to be to not be stagnant and to get that oxygen moving through the body. It's not going to be a one-time thing. You have to do all the things to like get the body moving. That's what we want to do. Yeah. Well, picture project. Okay. So now it's not as easy to get a machine or a lot of people don't want to put the expense up for the machine, but they can bring ozone into their homes through ozonated oils. Yes. So you've got your ozonated oils that are quite... You know that they're, they're they're premium because you can only make so much right now, and they're in a few places in Calgary. For those of you who want to get your hands on that, I tell them people all the time, you can go to Lotus Herbal Health, where you might see me there because I'm there a few days a week in Calgary, and also the Light Cellar in Calgary. So we've got jojoba oil, regular olive oil, the V Bomb, which is an essential oil blend with olive oil, and the Lip Balm these days. So let's talk about those and why would people want to have those available and what are all the ways that they can use those oils and let's well, first of all talk about the process like this isn't just like this is the process to get those oils saturated right and why are they not so people think oh it's, it's again we're coming back to the oxidation and isn't that going to rancidify because you don't want to expose your oils to oxygen so why is it not making the oils rancid why are they actually very therapeutic right so um, how the process works is I take pure oxygen, goes into the generator, and then I bubble it through olive oil. And over time, weeks, those ozone molecules will bind into the olive oil and, and it will eventually turn it into a paste. And they're basically trapped. Now, uh, it's the, the oils are not rancid because the oxygen that that ozone actually binds to the structure of the oil and holds it intact is really what it does. So it's not a rancid oil, even though it has ozone in it. Mm -hmm. So it's not oxidizing like we think of like leaving something out and it's oxidizing. It's not the same thing. It actually is um, this activated oxygen. 
And so when that turns into a paste, now you get to have the benefits of that ozone. It will, if you keep that in the fridge, that ozone will stay viable for 10 years. Ozone and heat are enemies. So as soon as you start to heat up that olive oil or whatever, it will actually, the, the ozone will start to dissipate out of it. Um, typically like this, this is a 30 mil jar. So I'm going to show, is that, is that? In some places, it, uh, move it over, oh, there. There. right right in the middle, right in the middle there. Yeah, we got the total yeah. ozone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, yeah, I say to people, if you're using that every day, you could leave it on the bathroom counter. No problem. Um, if you're using it as just, uh, you know, in your medical kit and you want to just have some on hand all the time, I would keep it in the fridge so that that ozone will stay viable. And when people buy it, it's in the fridge. I also wanted to mention that it, I do sell it out of Pure Earth Organics and Red Deer. Red Deer. Lovely. And, uh, um, oh my gosh, in Sylvan Lake too. Oh, with Natural, Dawn, Dawn Natural yeah. Solutions. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I made her carry it. Well, I didn't make her, but I yeah. that she contacted you and carry it. So yeah, I so Dawn and Sylvan Lake and- yeah. uh, yeah, Becca in in Red Deer. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you do all this stuff out there too, right? Like I have not lately, but yes, yes, yeah, yes. Um, so when you buy it, it'll be in the fridge. It's not going to be on the counter because I want people to have it that ozone stable until the moment they buy it. Same with the lip balm; it will be in the fridge. That way, when you buy it, you know, you know, it's not hasn't been sitting on the shelf for six months or a year or something like that. Right. Um, so the, oh, I mean, the uses of the oil, olive oil balm, as you said, Sasha, you used it to heal, um, your son's cavity. People will use it for dental. I think we both go to living wellness, dental, you go to living wellness. Well, I haven't been to the, I keep meaning to, I just haven't been to the dentist in many years. I meant to bring my son there, but it's, I'm yeah. not a dentist goer. Yeah. So, yes, I, I'm well aware yeah. of you. Yes. And, you know, yeah, it's specific. They're, they're a biological dentist yeah. office. I love them. Doesn't matter who you go see there. It's not going to be a shout out for them because I think they're like amazing. And they actually use ozone. And if they do extractions, they'll put ozone in, like right into, you know, that extracted tooth or like to help heal. Right. And then um, you don't have to go on the antibiotics, right? They understand that, right? Like you, but they, so that's what we did with my, my son's teeth when he was young, not the greatest, unfortunately, I think due to my vegan diet prior and maybe a little bit too much kombucha, to be honest, when he was younger. So, and they did do that ozone and the, the other ones, they'll just give you antibiotics. They'll do some ridiculous yeah. thing with the ozone. You're not going to do that. And they, they apply it as, as the gas. So, okay. And I want to, yeah. Okay. You continue. And then I'm going to have a question. Okay, go. Cool. Yeah. So, um, they actually recommended, you know, a number of clients to me all the time, uh, for the ozone for their, for dental, because it's so good. You can brush your teeth with it. I tell people to just put it on dental floss, get in between your teeth, which is so great. That's can, how it fits my son's dent cavity. Yeah. You can, you can use it on your skin. If people find it almost sometimes that all that, that active oxygen can be almost a little too much for people when they're dealing with skin issues. Like let's say you have cystic acne and you put it on and it almost feels like some people will say it almost has a burning sensation. It's not burning, but it just feels almost more irritated. I just say, do a mask. You can just do a mask for 15 minutes and then just wipe it off. But I've had people use it for cystic acne. I've had people use it for, I have on animals. Doesn't matter if your animal like licks it up either. It's, going to be com it's completely non-toxic um you can use it on baby bums you can use it on open wounds you can use it on you know after you have a surgery and you have sutures you can i mean the sky's Shingle. the limit shingles Sorry? shingles in fact um one of my friend's dad got uh shingles and really quite bad and um the only thing that alleviated it was the was the ozone bomb he said out of everything it was that um so people use it for shingles i've had women in like you know just if, if you have uh utis or you know you can 
insert it vaginally, like just get some on up there. <laughs> That's going to be great. It's amazing for hemorrhoids, probably the best thing for hemorrhoids. Mm. Um, would you yeah. cool it down then and put it in the, like, how would you do just rub it on there or? Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 You know, if somebody I'm, has like a, a tumor close to the skin. Would you be applying it that way? hundred percent. Yeah just put it right on the skin. Yeah. It's so amazing. Now the other one that, so I did this one, well, actually this still has the old label. So I picked up one that had, it has a bee balm, but in fact, I changed this name oh, you did. to okay. essential oil balm because when I first created this, I actually, uh, the, um, the candida, the candida buster formula, the essential oil formula was, was made by Blaine and Drusick. Oh, and, but Blaine, oh, I'm going to interview him too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. fine. Yeah. yeah. So he actually made the Candida Buster for this bomb. And um, is that a trade secret? Or are you going to tell us what essential oils are in there? Oh, no, it's not a trade secret. It has, uh, oh my gosh, it has, let's see if I can read that. Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> it has lavender. It has, um, uh spike pro, uh no spike lavender it has um palmarosa it has marjoram german chamomile cinnamon leaf lemongrass peppermint oh lots yeah so it's like actually there's a couple others but it it's smells so good like i get people to get that one so i have to pick some up actually for a friend tomorrow because her daughter got just got a cavity she knows my story about my son but I'm getting her that one because not everybody wants to taste the ozonated olive oil. And my son never complained for years. I put it in his mouth literally every day for years while I still did his teeth. But I just, the first time I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just see how he reacts. Nothing. And so cold source too, by the way, great thing for cold source, by the way. Right. Yes. But, so, but that's the one that I recommend for people to put into their mouths because it tastes and it smells so good. It really smells really good. That one. Yeah. And it's really the, so when people talk about, you know, uh, essential oils on the skin, this really only has a 2% dilution. And that's a combination of all of them, very low dilution. Right. So there's no worry about, you know, if this is what you want to use, because you like the smell of it. But the reason why I, when I first created it, I thought, oh, because it was a candida buster, V bomb, it's going to be used vaginally for yeast infections and that sort of thing. Yeah. But then people just start like men and women started using it because it smelled oh. so good and it's an amazing deodorant like it just like a little bit under your armpits I mean the whole point of ozone is to kill bacteria and so when our armpits stink it's like rub a little bit of, of that on there and it's just smells so good yeah. so I changed the name because I felt like I was kind of confining that usage and people might not realize that oh I could be using that you can use it for shaving you could use it for many things Right. Um, and it wasn't just bee balm. So I changed it to the essential oil and then the lip balm, which is, I called it what a relief. Uh, can you, yeah. Back. What a, back a little bit, back a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, there's a tube. Ah, oh, you can kind of see it every once in a while. It's yeah. okay. anyway, That's sorry. Really yeah. Um, and then that was my latest, uh, product and I am going to come out with more products for sure. Um, I'm just upping up my production on my ozone. So that will happen. But I did the, the lip balm and it was, it's been so amazing. I mean, people are just like, yeah, I'm using cold sore gone. Uh, you know, using it on bug bites, using it on a little scratch, using it on a wound. It's been so good. People really love it. It has a little ozone smell to it, but that's but it's ozone. yummy, but it's a nice one. It's still a lovely smell. It's not. Yeah. It smells good to me. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, when the ozone, the plain one, either people love it or they don't. It's just, that's the way it is. I remember I had a, a, a client and she had a baby and she said, I just use it as a, you know, a baby rash, like cream, the, the regular right. olive oil. And she said, my husband cannot stand the smell, but right. he uses it on the baby because it works so well. Right. <laughs> Sure. You know, it's like it works, so just use it. But um, yeah, eventually I'll just start making different, you know, 
formulas on that. You know, maybe one with just lavender. I thought of that. That one would be for... a really lovely one. Yeah. And, and lavender, because you can use it neat, it would be really great as a baby cream, you know, like just uh, to burns. do that. It would be amazing for burns too. Yeah. So, so good. many That's options. Good. My head is full of ideas, but I got to get my commercial production going and then things will happen so and so are you still doing the jojoba because I still have some of your jojoba that's what I gave my mom for Christmas because it's a beautiful moisturizer and the jojoba smells really good I love the smell of the jojoba well, yeah it's great without essential oils or anything it's lovely yeah so I will be doing jojoba again I haven't been because I've just been inundated with just trying to keep up with the olive oil and I can only do one oil at a time and a uh, jojoba it it just ha has a little bit of a different process it doesn't take as long to ozonate oils every oil has its own saturation saturation point for ozone so uh it's not really like a one to a hundred percent kind of thing it doesn't work like that but let's just say that's how it worked hemp would be at 100% saturation because it will hold so much ozone. It's like a thick, thick, thick paste. They talk about that for dental. Um, it takes a lot longer to uh, make because it will actually hold more ozone, um, uh, like, uh, like the oxygen in it, the ozone in it, right? So it actually takes a lot longer to ozone. Whereas jojoba, it because it's actually really a wax ester, it actually doesn't hold as much ozone. And that's why I think people love it. It's very light. It, yeah. you know, it's like a beautiful cream or oil on the skin. So yeah, I will definitely be doing that again. Yeah, because yeah. I know that people really loved it. Mm -hmm. yeah. My mom really thought it really helped with her skin. So yeah. she probably promote it right now since you can't really get it. There might be one left at Lord, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Get it quick before it's gone. <laughs> but it's a really lovely just moisturizer i'll often put yeah stuff, and then i go to the fridge and i'll put a layer of jojoba on afterwards yeah i know it's so beautiful and it and it will i i it'll it'll definitely be coming back so there'll be i'm just you know i'm waiting i'm just waiting for this lab to be created and then i can just like bust right. out with many products so why is it reversing cavities well, you're getting that active oxygen in there. And there's like, there's obviously like, uh, the, you know, there's a bacteria or there's like, you know, something going on in that cavity. It's not, uh, it's not able to heal. And so when you get any, when you get ozone, you're basically getting active oxygen, which is going to get at those anaerobic, you know, the bacteria, whatever is happening in that tooth, that's going to start healing it. Just like when people use it for, say cystic acne or a wound, like it's basically that wound is not healing because there's bacteria there. Right? And I guess that's wrong. So that brings me, okay, so what about the microbiome? Is it disrupting microbiome? Is it like an antibiotic healing all the microbes or is it leaving the good ones alone? What's it doing with that ratio? Leaves the good ones alone. And that's because that, um, uh, that oxygen molecule is only gonna bind to the anaerobic bacteria, cells, pathogens, right? Because when you have a healthy cell that has that enzymatic coating on it or an anti, um, uh, the, you know, it has a coating on it, antioxidant coating on it, which protects it from having a blast of oxygen in it. Mm. Whereas when there isn't that coating, which none of the, like no bacteria or, you know, um, uh, pathogens, parasites, cancer cells, any of that don't have that coating on it. So they're actually not protected. And when, what the job of ozone is, it's going to look for all of that attached to it and then basically take it out of the body right. and yeah. And then allow oxygenation to happen through, right. you know, other healing, healthy things that you're going to do for your body. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like ozone. While it's amazing, it's not the silver bullet. It's an amazing bullet that for sure you want to add on. But, you know, if you healed your son's cavity and you didn't take care of anything else in his body or you kept putting the ozone on, but you're like giving him pop and giving him <laughs> candy bars or whatever. It's that ozone isn't going to wipe that out. 
Like, yeah. it, you know, it's a, it's a whole process. And so you're giving him an amazing diet, which is helping, you know, replenishes oxygen in his body. That's really what. And also doing. like I just did, I interviewed Nadine Armas on holistic dental care last week. I haven't posted that one yet as uh, we're recording this, but of course, I mean, you need the fat soluble vitamins as well. So, cause the teeth are a self heated healing units, right? So you give them the nutrients that they need to remineralize. And then you put the ozone in to clean it all out. And totally. Yeah. It's a, it's never just one thing. It's, you know, you actually have to work the body from many different angles. Right. Um, right. But, but it's so fun to see what's possible. Like I literally saw this brown spot start to form again, but I'm like, uh oh, and I started just flooding it probably twice a day on floss, getting that area really full. And I've also reversed an abscess in his mouth. He had some mouth stuff going on. I reversed an abscess in his mouth as well. And, you know, he used to, he doesn't get pulsars anymore, but he would just reach forward and put it on and wow. Success, wow. success, success, success. My friend, her son was having quite a bit of acne. She, he got her this one, she got him this one product internally to get the right nutrients together with that ozone. The next time I saw him within a week, I couldn't believe the difference. Like yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So it's just, ah, it's, and, and it's just so fun because people are just like, wow. I'm like, I know people, this is, this is what's available to you. You don't have to suppress anything. You don't have to cut it out or poison it or irradiate it or whatever. Totally. You know, it's just, yeah. Totally. It's, such a, it's such a, the ozone oil is such a great way to get ozone into the body, on the body. It's so safe and healing. I mean, it's, I had a, I had a, a woman who owned a pet store and her dog had a big uh, tumor on its paw to the point where the dog couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. And she bought some ozone oil, started putting it on. It actually kind of popped and started to drain, which is amazing. You oh, want blood flow. Oh, yeah. And it took maybe like three weeks. And she said, my dog is walking. Like right. amazing. Like I love those stories, oh, you know, totally. like they're just, it's, yeah clear up like it I, and i think the thing with ozone it's not just this topical band-aid what you're really doing is you're getting that oxygen into the skin layer like you're getting it into your skin where that healing can happen you right. know the oxygen can attach to the bacteria and the things that shouldn't be there and like get rid of them and heal them so it's yeah it's such a powerful a powerful tool really that we can have in our toolbox. Um, and I encourage people, if you can still get ozone generators, for sure, I would definitely be doing that. Right. You know, I don't know what that looks like at this point in Canada, but you know, they haven't eliminated it from home use. So I don't know, but they're not going to make it easy for you. They're going to try. Know. Exactly. Exactly. They're gonna try. And yeah. are you using the oils every day? Are you using them? How do you use them? I like them at night, actually. I like to just put them, you know, like around my eyes. And I, I use a very light, um, you know, just layer of the oils on. And I go through spurts. You know, I'm kind of like the shoemaker's kids. You know, <laughs> it's like, are you doing ozone every day? You have ozone. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not doing ozone every day. <laughs> Well, oh, right. I have that tool in my toolbox. Yes, you, I'm kind of, you know what that's like. It's like you work in a, you know, a health food store and they're like, do you take all these things? You're like, yeah, no, I kind of forget sometimes, <laughs> you know, but in the winter we were doing a ton of ozone actually, like, oh, yeah, because I still have my sauna. So we're still doing it at home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the oils are incredible. Totally. Totally. I can't wait to find out what else you uh, bring out there. Now, I, mean, you're the first to know. I know I'm waiting. I'm seriously, I'm waiting. I'm a big, you know, I love mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, so is there anybody who can't use it? Is there any reasons why somebody would avoid it in any way? Um, well, they talk about people who maybe have had, um, uh, like, uh, transplants of tissue because your body might actually you know try and get rid of that tissue because it's actually not your tissue oh. right so that may happen i mean that's what they say the contraindications i've obviously never dealt with anything like that they talk about people who have um, heart issues or um now here's an interesting thing is i 
I did have clients that had high blood pressure, heart issues. They would come into the sauna, but I would just do very low heat because it's actually, I think, more of the heat that exasperates, you know, high blood pressure. It's like pregnancy. Right. They say no to pregnancy, to breastfeeding, but I also know a ton of people who have actually used that. And that's I'm recommending it. No, I'm not recommending it, but I am saying that if you have a sauna, you know, when you're pregnant, they tell you not to go in a sauna or not to go in a hot tub. It's because of the heat. I don't think it's because of the, the ozone. Right. Okay. Right. And so they just, I think, blanket that and say, no, no ozone. Um, anybody else? Uh, if you've had like recent internal bleeding, you would probably want to stop not or not do any ozone because ozone will oxygenate the blood. Like we are, you know, if your blood is thick and sticky and you're, Blood cells are sticking together. When you go into ozone, it's like, you know, it's rapid fire. Your blood is like really swimming now because you have that activated oxygen in there and it can exasperate maybe recent bleeding if that's what you had. Like I, if women were coming in for, uh, you know, ozone and they wanted to do vaginal, but they had just had maybe their, you know, they just had their period, I would just say, well, not vaginal this time because it would actually get that blood flow kind of moving a little bit. Oh, what if women are clotting or having problems in the moment? Like could that, or maybe in between, like, I know somebody who's having a lot of issues that might be perimenopausal, but you know, these days you don't know why we're bleeding. We don't know. There's different reasons for extended bleeding or clotting and things like that would be that if somebody's dealing with some kind of a clot, would that be something that could be helpful? Well, if they were, if they were dealing with that, I would, um, like you mean like internally for like, you, yeah. like if you're having a period, yeah, I would come in around the, like, I would still come in, they could come in when they had their period. I just wouldn't obviously do uh vaginal, but they could still come in. I would have women who would do that. I would just like say, look, you might have a little bit of extra bleeding. We deal with that in the sauna, you know, um, and just keep coming in. There's been, you know, I've read a ton of stuff and this was like years ago about endometriosis, like how mm. powerful ozone is for endometriosis and doing vaginal, like clearing stuff up. Like it's so good, um, really healing for the uterus and, you know, for anything that's going on. Um, okay, but of course, amazing. you know, we don't recommend that. Right. Right. I mean, not right. me in right. general. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. The powers that be that that don't recommend it so really no uh you know i've had kids sitting in the sauna little kids um and i just never do the heat really high you know little kids shouldn't be sitting in hot sauna anyways but just enough to keep them warm but uh, i had a family and they had two young kids they were probably like four and six and they used to bring them in every week and do sauna for wow. their kids oh yeah like wow. just lovely like just lovely they were like yep totally doing this you know they said our kids are like just so you know they were in school so just through the winter just really helped keep their kids healthy yeah amazing amazing i'm just looking to see if i have any other questions because i think i think that's pretty much uh okay well i don't know like so it's safe and effective people, huh? you can use it in different ways. It's not as easily accessible in Canada, but maybe in your country of origin, then maybe it is, but you might be able to find it. Who knows? We have to kind of have to take control of these things these days. You know what I mean? You know, even though, you know, once upon a time, you can only get down to 1,000 IUs of vitamin D. Now you can get a little bit higher here and in other places you can get even higher. You know, just just because something's regulated doesn't mean that's what's best for us, but you get yeah. to do that at that point. You know, um, Sasha, if you want to put in your show notes, my email, okay, contact me and, you know, I can, depending on where they live, probably navigate that because it's really not illegal personally. Um, but they can email me. Sure. And you can put my email down. And we'll absolutely do that. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if they have questions or they just maybe want to know a little bit more about the oil or, you know, maybe they do have a generator. Maybe they found a generator, you know, they got it from somewhere else and they want to know how to figure that out. And what's the best. I'm totally happy to help people navigate that because it's a, you know, if you go online and you start looking, there's just a lot of misinformation as always. 
particularly when the government has said, hey, you know, this is like not safe. And it's just really not true. Ozone is completely safe when used properly, when used the way it's supposed to be used. And if you're using, you know, pure, pure medical grade ozone, it's totally safe. So, yeah, I know I've had people ask me about the ozone, you know, you can get ozone generators that clean your fruit and vegetables and they just run ozone from your, like you just plug in a little contraption on your, I don't know, your sink or something. And then you, it makes ozone in water and then you can clean your fruits and vegetables. Have you seen oh. those? No. Yeah, you can get those. They're just little tiny things that sit on a counter and you just plug it in and then you can ozonate the water that you're going to clean your fruits and vegetables, which is great, but it uses ambient air. You do not want to be making ozone water. You do not want to be drinking that stuff. You that that is that is not a therapy. That's that's actually not therapy because when you what take is ambient, why is that bad? Because when you take ambient air, it's not hundred percent oxygen. It's not ninety nine point ninety nine percent pure oxygen like you're going to get out of an oxygen tank. Okay. And so you're using twenty percent oxygen or whatever it is, eighty percent nitrogen, right? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. twenty one seventy nine something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you have nitric oxide, like it's not. It's actually co something completely different. And so you don't want that. You don't want to be making that. If that's actually okay. not. Safe. So I mean, what about these air purifiers that are some things that you can turn on and they're generating, oh, you just plug it into the wall and it's an air purifier and it's making, it smells like ozone. Totally. So yeah. that's an interesting one. I used to have them a long time ago and I think I actually bought them from a Longevity Now conference way back in the day. Mm. And, um, and I had them plugged in and I would use them in the house. Um, and then I heard that you shouldn't use them. But then I actually did, this has actually just come up recently for me because I'm like, okay, what about those ozone generators that you could get and just plug them in and they're using the ambient air. So they basically said, it's like, you want to make sure you're buying from a reliable source for those room ozonators. And it's about the concentration. And so if you feel like they're running in your room and you, <laughs> you're like, when you get too much ozone in your lungs, you'll start to cough because it's an irritant okay. like, you know, so you're, you might start to cough or you might to feel a little congestion and they say, turn it off and just leave the room. Ozone only has a half life of 20 minutes. Ozone starts to break down. So in a room, it will start to break down very quickly. Um, but they just said, look for reputable companies making them where you can adjust the concentration. So you could literally have this really low concentration of ozone filtering in your room. And if you're not feeling it in your lungs, it's all good. And it's more about being aware. Uh, you know, if you have it in your office space and you're constantly coughing, it could be your ozone generator. Right, right. And, Okay. But it does we clean have up. one because we have one we plugged it in and Tim had to get a new part for it and just turned it on. And so that just made me think about it. It's like, oh, but we're not supposed to, but it is. You, there's a big dial and I put on low. Yeah. And it's and I keep it downstairs from, yeah. in the basement. So it kind of filters up a little bit. But I feel like the basement's a good place because the basement's where stagnation is, you know, where things, if there's any leaks or anything. And I feel like that's a good place to put it yeah. on. Yeah. And, and you, you could turn it up in your basement if you want to. Let's say you're leaving the house or whatever. You could turn it up. And then when you come home, just turn it off and then just let it do its, you know, it will just dissipate. And there are companies, which is interesting, um, that will come in. Because I would always get calls about this. Like, can you come ozonate my house? And I actually had hooked up with a guy who did it commercially. Oh, I was okay. getting so many calls. And I messaged him, said, can I just give your name out? Because I'm getting all these calls about ozonating a house. I don't do that. But what they do is they come in, they just, you have to just leave. And then they pretty much just close off the house and they'll run like a big commercial ozonator uh, or ozone generator. And they just ozonate the entire house and they huh. are running for like, I don't, I don't know what the hours are, depending on maybe what's going on, if there's mold or yeah. what's happening or smoke or, and it will wipe that out. It will take that smell right out. It will completely disinfect your house and there's nothing to clean up. You don't have to like right. wipe anything off. It's not toxic. They just basically let it dissipate. And then you just go back into your house. Right. 
So there are companies that do that if people need that kind of service. That's, that'd be really good for you. Have a leak, you've got some mold, mildew issues. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, Lisa, this is amazing. There's so many like guys, aren't you interested? Don't you? You now you need to get some ozone. Uh, oil so get it while you can because it's in short supply at the moment go to the light seller go to lotus herbal health go to pure earth or go to natural solutions in the mid southern like alberta area other people so you're out of luck but there are other people making products out there and i'm sure there are other good products out there i'm yeah. sure there's all ranges you probably need to know your sourcing right and the quality of what people are making because i've seen videos where literally they make ozonated olive oil in like a few hours like i don't understand how that's even i don't know i don't even know how that's possible maybe i don't know it's wow. certainly it's not even going to be possible when i do commercial so i don't know at six liters at a time so right. i have no idea how that is right 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 but maybe okay okay yeah. well is there anything else to be covered at all do you think anything else people need to know Oh, I think we covered it all so good. Thank you, Sasha. It's been a long time coming. I was like, a I brain. know, hasn't it though? I know. I'm glad we made it work. So that's awesome. Another thing I like about these things, by the way, kids, when kids are getting their cuts and scrapes and things like you put on, it doesn't hurt. Right. And it stays like, I love cleaning things out with, um, coil silver, for example, that's what I was using, but this has staying power, right? It'll stay on there and you can put it on the area. So it'll keep it cleaner for longer as well. So you can put it on your lips. You can put it on whatever the zit, you can do a spot treatment. You can do so many different things. I know it's so, so it's so good. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so we Thank look you forward so to much. Time. Yes. 15 years and counting. I'm still kind of blown away by that. <laughs> <laughs> I know we look way different. My, I had shorter hair back. No, maybe I was growing up and you had longer hair. And yeah. yeah. And I wasn't a mama and now and near a grandmother mm -hmm. now. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. So well, okay. And people, is there, is there, an, is, is there a site that people can go to, to learn more about it or not right now? Or what? Well, I have a site. I have a site. Yeah. Totalozone.ca. I have a website. Okay. Totalozone.ca. Yep. Yep. And they can order the product online, but honestly, it's like, you know, you're going to have to pay for shipping. And so if you're in Calgary, go to Lotus Herbal. I mean, right. you know, if you're in yeah. Red Deer, go to Pure yeah. Earth. I mean, yeah. Right. Don't buy it online because you're going to pay for the shipping. But I have had some people who are in Toronto and I've even shipped it out to Saudi Arabia to wow. a woman who needed it there. And yeah, working with dental actually was interesting. Oh, and um, so I have shipped it, you know, around to different places for sure. But, you know, Calgary area, like just go to the source. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is you. Okay. Okay. Well, everybody, I know you love that. Please share. As I keep saying lately, I'm being censored. So I count on you for passing the word around and sharing this. And please give us, give me any feedback. If you want to hear anything else or what you thought about this podcast, you can find me on YouTube and other podcast platforms. Going to get off of YouTube and get censored on YouTube. But for now, that's where I am in the video form. And so please share and I hope you enjoy. And until the next time, be healthy, be well. And listen to some of my other episodes if you just found me because there's lots of good stuff on this channel. Lots so thanks for joining me again. And until next time, be well. Bye.